Now that you have a good understanding of entries and exits and trading strategies, we're going to focus on one very important exit, the stop loss. This is probably the least popular feature of a trading strategy, but it is vital to managing P&L and to surviving in the trading world. We will look at the main types of stop losses and discuss the use of static and dynamic stop losses to help manage trading risk. We will also look at how to structure stop losses based on your trading view and changes in market prices and volatility. First, we are going to explore different types of stop losses. In the previous section, we described the four parameters associated with the trading rule or model. There is the entry signal where you initiate a trade, the profit exit, the stop loss, and the timeout. Some traders do not care about timeouts. They will simply hold on until either the trade is profitably exited or incurs a loss against them. Almost all traders have a stop loss. If they don't choose one, their risk management may choose it for them. Stop losses serve one purpose. They reduce your risk. Suppose you have no stop loss. Your trade can go into free fall. Consider if a stock is falling because there was a fraud associated with the company. If you are still bullish, you could keep your position. However, you may regret not taking a small loss compared to a much bigger one if prices continue to fall. The graph shows Steinhoff, a consumer goods company, that reported irregularities in their accounting. On December 5th, 2017, their stock dropped 63% and has since declined further to where it is worth less than 10% of its value on December 4th. So when your trade doesn't go as planned, how do you decide where to exit? Well, there are two types of stop losses. The first is static. The second is dynamic. You can set a stop loss statically based on where you enter the trade. Suppose you enter at 200. If you can tolerate a 2.5% loss, then your stop loss should be at 195. If you can only tolerate a 1.5% loss, your stop loss should be at 197. If you were very risk averse, you might only tolerate a 1% loss, then your stop loss would be 198. Ideally, you want to stop out where the loss is within your risk tolerance. To do so, you may place a stop loss order with your broker. Suppose you place a stop loss order at 195. Then if the stock trades at or below that price, your broker enters a market order to sell and you exit your trade. This helps to limit your loss. Suppose your trade goes against you right away. You may hit the stop loss quickly. If the stop loss is too conservative, or as traders say, too tight, you may hit it based on noise in the market. Picking a good stop loss is a trade off. You want a stop loss that is not so tight that it will be triggered often with slight market movements. You also want a stop loss that is not so loose that it will cause you to take a large loss. But what if the trade moves in your favor? Suppose you have an ambitious exit signal of 250 basis points. The stock moves to 203. You still want to keep your stop loss at 195. If the stock has lots of volatility, it's possible it will drop down. Is there some way you can take advantage of the paper profit you've achieved? That is, your unrealized profit of about $3. Rather than set the stop loss statically, you set it dynamically. That is, you can set the stop loss to be 2.5% below the current price. So if Apple reaches 203, your new stop loss is at 198. This means that you would no longer lose 2.5% from your entry level, but rather from your highest unrealized profit. Your dynamic stop loss is $3 more than your original static stop loss. You do this because you've made unrealized profits. You want to increase the chances of keeping them. Now, if the trade continues to move in your favor, you may simply get profited out. But if the trade moves against you, you will only stand to lose $2 or 1%. So the first type of dynamic stop loss is where you raise the stop loss so it trails the high price rather than the entry price. However, you can add another dynamic element to the stop loss. 
not only can you increase the stop loss to follow the high, you can also change the percentage. In the earlier example, you kept the stop loss at 2.5%. But suppose you make 1.5% with Apple at about 203, and your target is still 204. You may want to keep some of that capital gain. Therefore, you can lower the percentage. Rather than use 2.5%, you may use 1.5%. Now your stop loss is about $200. This is the level where you entered the trade. Now you will exit the trade without a loss. What type of stop loss should you use? Whatever you decide, you should have evidence to support its use. Recall that we have four parameters to describe a model. You can backtest a model with a static stop loss. You can backtest a model with a dynamic stop loss. You can even backtest with a variable dynamic stop loss. You hope you get much better results using one type of stop loss as opposed to the others. Then it will be clear which stop loss you should use. If you decide to use a variable percentage, you can base the percentage on backtests with market price and volume data.